and welcome to In Retrospection, where we review the retro today. I am Joshua Caleb. And I am Freakin' D. What does that even mean? Freakin' D? I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I sort of adapted it from a, a old username or AI name from the original Need for Speed on the 3DO. Sort of okay. evolved it over the years. I have a couple of those weird new usernames floating around. So Yeah, I, I went through like four or five of them, and for some reason that one stuck. I have no idea. So today, or tonight rather, we are doing the first long play on In Retrospection. Where we pick a game and we play it start to finish. Um, not all in one night, though. That was yeah. really late. <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm hearing some really choppy audio coming from the uh, emulator there. Yeah, I've noticed that. I'm not sure what is up with that. Actually, okay. I'm going to take a gamble and try this another way. You will. Okay. Yes. I cla no, I don't want to pause this. Actually, yes, I do, because I want to start a new game. Ah, a virtual console. The only thing I ever use my Wii for. That and GameCube games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple of GameCube games. I got Smash Brothers and Chibi Robo. Not much else. So I never noticed this when I first played Donkey Kong Country, but did you catch the sort of homage to the original Donkey Kong in that intro? Oh yeah, yeah. There's that whole supposed story that the Donkey Kong that you play in this one is actually the Donkey Kong Junior from the arcade game Donkey Kong Junior, grown up. So Cranky Kong was the original Donkey that, Kong. That, that's the way I always understood that that was supposed to be canon. That supposedly, yeah. Some people argue it's not, but that just makes more sense because I mean, I mean, I suppose Mario hasn't really aged, but yeah, Mario is kind of ageless. That would be intriguing to see an old Mario, but hey, we see all the old, uh, old Donkey Kong here, so maybe someday. <laughs> oh, that poor empty banana horde. It's all sad. It's one thing they, they never explain in the um, manual or anything is what the deal is with the banana horde, why a bunch of reptiles are after his bananas. Yeah, why do reptiles want bananas? I guess they just, I think their hatred for the uh, apes here just overtakes their normal <laughs> yeah, appetites or something. I, I don't know. That's that's maybe my guess. They just hate Donkey Kong so much. They're like, screw you, man. We're going to take your bananas. Ah, uh, Diddy Kong. <laughs> Always liked Diddy Kong a little bit better, and that yeah. really got on my nerves when they took him out of uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. They made oh, him into a jetpack. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the sort of tag on thing, but yeah, I do miss playing as Diddy Kong. Okay. Yeah, it felt more like I was playing Banjo Kazooie Kong or something. You know, <laughs> he's just in a backpack, so yeah. it's kind of strange. Yes. No, we can't die. We're doing it live. I made a fatal error. <laughs> <laughs> I am playing the virtual console version of this game with a GameCube controller, which means the buttons are, like, completely reversed. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I can see that. That sucks. No, yeah, that would totally throw off every bit of rhythm. So, I am going to cheat. Mm -hmm. 
and run it a different way. That works. Okay. I have been wanting to do this to my Wii for the longest time now. Uh, just get some emulators on there and put that thing to use. Just yeah. Run around to it. It's a little tricky trying to pull together all the different resources on, on actually how to do it and doing it right. I saw something recently. Uh, was it with the Lego Indiana Jones exploit or something? I don't remember. Yeah, I used the Smash Brothers Brawl, but there's like a Lego Batman one. There's a Indiana Jones one. And there's a Twilight Princess one, I think. Ah, yes. The Indiana better. Jones one, if it was like the banana bomb thing or banner bomb, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. I used the custom level on Smash Brothers Brawl where you download a hacked custom level and then when you load it in, in Brawl, it launches the exploit. Cool. Now here's something interesting. Is it just me or do the graphics look better on the emulator than they did on the virtual they console? They kind of do actually, yeah. That's sad. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's, uh, that's how it goes. You get the Ah, the sneaky nerds in the bedroom making custom software that ends up better than the console producer's software. So... Now, I wonder how far I can get... I'm figuring on doing this for 45 minutes to an hour, if we have time. So I want to see how far I can go through. Yeah. I think the, la the last time we did just a one hour quick playthrough of this, I think I got to like the third world in one hour. Yeah, I don't care about those. <laughs> yeah, that sounds doable. It, you know, usually I can get you, you pretty much just past or just into the third world, and then you start getting to some of those that are just tricky and I end up dying because if you don't play those later levels all the time you just lose your touch yeah so <laughs> I usually get to about world four or something especially like, I'm like that all right I'll start again <laughs> trick track trek and tanked up trouble mm -hmm. those are brutal I love them they're some of my favorite levels but holy crap yeah they're <laughs> This is actually one of the few games that I have played over and over and over again. I think I've owned it in, in, in every one of its iterations. So they had it on the Super Nintendo, the yeah, Game uh, Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance, the Virtual Console. The Game Boy Color version of this was surprisingly good. <laughs> I know, that was, that was amazing. Uh, it, it was awesome. And it even had an actual level. The um, yeah. Neki's Nightmare, I think it was called. Oh, that was dumb. Yeah, this was when I had a Super Nintendo, the first one I got, it was the uh, that newer one okay. that they came out with in those sort of later 90s, the smaller one. This was the only game I had for it, so I played it endlessly. Absolutely friggin' endlessly. Yeah, the, <laughs> and then somebody, somebody in the family, I think somebody uh, ended up sticking it in the wrong area and sent it to Goodwill. It was very sad. Mm, that was a bummer. Yeah, it ended up in like a pile of clothes or something. It's like set this aside so it doesn't get sent to Goodwill. I guess sent to Goodwill. <laughs> yeah, I'm still bitter about that. <laughs> that sounds like Toy Story Three. <laughs> yeah, it kind of <laughs> does actually. Uh, I can just imagine my Super Nintendo going through in the incinerator there and. Except it doesn't get saved at the last second. It's burned. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was the darker ending to Toy Story 3. Was there a light ending? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I suppose. Uh. So 
So how many of the secret areas and bonus stages on this one do you have you memorized? I don't know if there's any that I don't know of in the first world here. The second one, I've got most of them, I suppose. I'm with you all the way so far here. You might have missed one really early back on level one there, but tiny, tiny little things like bananas and hidden life and stuff like that, but yeah. And Past that, really no, I can never survive long enough to remember all the secrets. <laughs> I'm just like, let's get through this game. <laughs> well, see, I had the unofficial strategy guide for Donkey Kong Country, ah. which is like a huge, thick book. So I read that, and then every time I'd go to Barnes & Noble, I would read up on the Prima strategy guides, and I had pretty much everything memorized. I love those unofficial strategy guides. Yeah, there were so many of those. I had like 15 of them for Duke Nukem 3D. There were a, wow. a million different variations of these, and there's still some of those that I don't have. There's just a big stack of them in my closet somewhere, and yeah. I don't see many unofficial strategy guides anymore. I guess there's really no use for them. You barely see the regular ones, but... With game facts? <laughs> yeah, I know. Places like that, and even YouTube, you know. That's, uh, half yeah. the time, that's what I do. If I get stuck, I just type it into YouTube, and there we go. It's solved for you. Somebody's showing you exactly what to do. So. Uh-huh. Or if you really want to be lazy and you have a hacked console, you can download a save file that has that a too. beat for you. That's what I started doing around the whole Dreamcast era. <laughs> when they got that VMU uh, reader thing, you can put the save files on it, burn them onto a CD in that oh, program, nice. and you can put them onto your VMU that way. It was awesome. I need to get a Dreamcast. Dreamcast. It's amazing. Probably one of my favorite consoles next to, I guess, the Genesis PS1. It's right up there. Uh, so many little hidden gems. I know, I actually and it's great at emulation too. Dreamcast is. Oh yeah, I've got oh nice emulators for pretty much 16-bit consoles and back, and it also plays uh, PS1 games. Oddly enough, oh, that's weird. Yeah, and there was actually a commercial emulator that came out for the Dreamcast called Bleem. I used to sell it in computer stores. And it allowed you to play PS1 games on your Dreamcast. You put the CD in there, and, you know, it's just a boot swapping thing. Starts uh -huh. up the emulator, and you pop in your PS1 CD into the Dreamcast, and it plays them, and it looks better, too. It, like, added uh, some sort of fake anti-aliasing and texture sharpening. But <laughs> wow. It worked, man. <laughs> I remember playing Gran Turismo 2 on the Dreamcast. <laughs> nice. Now Gee, I really need to get one. <laughs> I wonder if this is there. Oh, yep. I remember there was a photograph on the Game Boy Advance version right there, so I figured there had to be a bunch of bananas there on the Super Nintendo version. Yes, indeed. Coral Capers. <laughs> this was the level that made me want a Super Nintendo as soon as I saw this in the store. Donkey Kong Country actually didn't have too bad water levels. No, a lot of people hate water levels. This is the game that made me love water levels, even the crappy ones. I remember playing like TMNT on the NES. <laughs> that made me hate water levels. Uh -huh. This, on the other hand, was like, oh yeah, it's music and everything. It's great. Yeah, and it's all uh, in the controllable blur, <laughs> blur or, I don't know, the wavy effect you get with the water. Yeah, just looking into the background there, I would just you know set it, set the controller down, and just look at it and Veg all the creatures. They looked all cool with the light shining on them. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of my favorite songs in Donkey Kong Country. Yep. If I can make up for all those lives I lost in the first couple levels. <laughs> Gonna try. 
There's a slight lag that's throwing me off a bit. Yeah, good old capture lag. Yeah, water levels in any games, I don't know what it is. I just, you know, even the water levels in some of the Sonic games, everybody hates those because it slows down Sonic and stuff. I'm like, you know why? That's fine. I mean, I don't like the bubbles. <laughs> Nobody likes those, but yeah, it's still cool. It's underwater. Apparently, monkeys can breathe underwater, whereas hedgehogs can't. <laughs> yeah. so. These monkeys are a little more evolved than a uh, blue hedgehog. Blue standing up hedgehog with uh, red sneakers, somehow. Oh, these monkeys have a tie and a, and a cool hat. So. Yes. Though, wasn't there some book or some novelization or something that explained the reason they br they could breathe underwater was because they had these little magical barrels they tied around their neck like a little necklace with a little barrel that I seem to remember something like that, that it, let them breathe honestly I, I seem to remember something like that on the Donkey Kong Country TV show that maybe that's what it was thing. yeah because they would explain all sorts of random stuff on that that needed no explaining, but they just did it. Yeah, it must have, it must have been <laughs> they had that. An exposition for no reason. It was great. Okay, this is the one that is chock full of... Major bonus. secret to the left there. Yeah. I think. Can't you go up on top of that little mountain? Yeah, and it'll, it'll shoot you across to the top here, yeah. which will skip the first section of the level. Yeah, you skip basically to the halfway point or something close to it. Yeah, there should Lots be Lots of bananas, whatever the case. There should be a checkpoint around here somewhere. I'm gonna need your agility diddy. And go up here, skip the middle part of the level. Uh, yes, and there's a... Yeah, it looks like there's somebody asking. We're not getting all the secrets. Yeah, well, that's okay. Getting most of them. We're getting secrets, so Let's see. There we go. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, on, that, timing just off. That, that always used to work. If you hit the center one, you would always land in the barrel, and you could go for one more. Yeah, if you can get all three of them, if you go just to the left of the middle bananas on that one, uh, it'll catch you every single time. And oh, then just to the right okay. of the bananas on the left row then it'll get to the third one. It'll catch you. So you have to be just like a split second off by capture lag. I would be surprised if you did <laughs> at all. Okay, now this is the part I think I've only been able to get this once. There is some way you can time yourself to shoot out of this barrel, miss the one above you, land on one of those reptiles when they're at the apex of their jump, and land on the palm tree to the left which will then get you to a barrel that skips the whole rest of the level. Yeah, I don't think I've ever done that. Oh, oh close. Very close. It's almost impossible to get. But it does basically, you skip the entire rest of the level. Yeah, this is one of the few that I think you can skip pretty much everything. There's that one tree tops level that you can do that. And then, of course, the first minecart level. Oh, yeah. Skip. It's just jumping off the edge. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah. just freak my friends out. Oh, you're killing yourself. Nope, nope. Just, just skipping the whole level, guys. Barrel level used to always terrify me. I'm trying to get the time. Yeah, me too. I'm... Oh, you know, if bees looked exactly like that in real life, I would be absolutely terrified of bees. <laughs> <laughs> because those things are like heart attack inducing even now. Yeah, like, Ugh. oh, yeah, why not just shoot yourself out of a giant barrel and, you know, oops, wrong one. Oh, well. Okay, well, I get a second shot at this one. See, it's always trying to time it when they're at the apex of their jump. Oh, oh man. So close. <laughs> so very. Yeah, racking up those lives. Ooh. Well, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Every, every so often that happens. You, you miss a barrel, but then you catch the one underneath it. Yeah. Oh man, those later uh, levels where you got all the snow going and everything, that was snow notorious for blast. having those kind of yes. barrel trap things. <laughs> and some of them are necessary, so, you know, it's trial and error. Well, we have the spinning ones. The spinning ones are the worst. And I don't know how many times I've died because of that stupid armadillo right there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, uh, yes. Hello. Are those bees hornets? Yeah, maybe they are hornets. Mmm, candy. <laughs> I'm gonna save my point. <laughs> or something. Yes. <laughs> Very strange character. Uh. Easiest boss in the whole game. I still, I still fondly remember trying this out as a kid and dying. <laughs> Losing all my lives. It's so sad, but whatever. Uh, yeah, now I was like, like, what is this stupid beaver? Yeah, well, and then he, then he, then he comes back. He, he's actually kind of yeah, tough uh -huh. when he comes back. They like to recycle a few of the bosses in this game. Yeah, yeah. It's not quite as bad. And then as... resize like some of the sprites and stuff. Later. Yeah. <laughs> not not quite as bad as um Jungle Beat. That game recycled bosses so many times. I can't say I've ever played that. It was one of the it was one of those bongo games. It was, it, yeah, that was one with the plastic drums or whatever. Yeah, it was actually a really good platformer, and the graphics for the GameCube were amazing. But the gameplay was a little weird, being that you controlled them with the bongos. And it recycled bosses like there was no tomorrow. They just kept... They, they basically just changed the colors up a little bit and call it a new boss. Yeah, yeah. That's that's old school design all the way, except in the 2000s. So, <laughs> great, great job there. Okay. Mickey's walkway. So, uh, do we want to skip the minecart level? Oh no, we got to do it. Okay. <laughs> I, I was I was terrible at this one, but I've gotten a little better over the years. So let's see if I can make it with capture lag. Yeah, this will be the ultimate test right here. Ah! Jumped one th well, too many. Test failed. <laughs> <laughs> one more try. so satisfying to hit those bananas with that cart, though. Oh, it's, it's just <laughs> one of those things that seats yourself in your mind when you're playing this. I don't know. I have to hit bananas with a mine cart. It's a wonderful feeling. Not that I've tried it in real life or anything. Not that I would admit. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Those are the tough ones. The, the vertical jumps. Yeah, you have to be so right on, even without capturing at the same time so okay let's see if i can do this ah <laughs> i'm gonna try and go over it but i think you have to get right on the lip where that barrel is so you can jump yeah you have it. to get right up to it so it doesn't suck you into it it's hungry barrels get in anywhere near close I jumped. I don't think it's gonna work here. <laughs> I know that that spot is the worst place for to have lag. Oh. Hut. And boom. Ah, yeah, they psych you out. I forgot about the last guy. <laughs> oh yeah. So what you need to do is hook this up to a TV and then have the output of the TV hooked up to the capture so you don't have any lag. But... Yeah. 
if I had my own If TV. you have that option, you know. I barely have enough room for my computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm preaching to myself here too because I tell myself I'm going to do that every single time and I never do. I just hook it up to the capture device and deal with the lag. So, <laughs> whatever. Most of the time it's not that bad. Because every so often you get those really nail biting timing games where you just have to get it down to the millisecond. Yeah, well, this is definitely one of those. You don't blink. I, I think I peel my eyelids back whenever I'm playing this. Yeah, that's. I I did I did that a lot on rhythm games. Where you, you just. Oh man, those are the worst. You just have to stare at the screen and you don't blink. You don't think. You just do. I'm playing uh, frequency and amplitude for the first time. I had to get like eye drops just to recover <laughs> from those games. Oh, what was... I played play Donkey Konga. That was pretty rough. Um, the little rhythm game they included on the Game Boy Advance remake of Donkey Kong Country, that was pretty... That was pretty bad. Um, I think what other rhythm, ga rhythm games I've played... I haven't played that many, but I've played the few that I have quite a bit. I tried DDR once. <laughs> once. Uh, I tried Dan Central. <laughs> that was something. Well, there we go. Yeah. Get your dancing games out of the way. Parappa the Rappa, there's, yeah, somebody just mentioned that. That one was awesome. I have a demo for uh, that. At least I remember it being awesome. I, yeah, I had it on the, um, was it PS1, whatever that magazine was, the monthly thing. PlayStation Underground? underground. PlayStation Underground. Yeah, I, I have a, I've been collecting a few of those underground discs at, like, GameStop and stuff. One of them, I think, has Parappa the Rapper on it. I find them occasionally at Goodwill, and those things, they're just so nostalgic. <laughs> there was one that had um, Intelligent Cube, the demo on it. I played that endlessly. And, of course, now the game is absolutely impossible to find. It's like goes for $80 on eBay. Wow. So I had completely given up on ever getting that game and only ever playing the demo. And then I found it at Goodwill not too long ago. For two dollars, nice. so <laughs> I was like, "All right, thank you, gaming gods." <laughs> so, now, this is the nerve-wracking part. I'm trying to time the jumps on the tires. <laughs> yeah, trampoline sort of mechanics in these games are. <sighs> I seem to remember if it was the Game Boy Advance remake, or I seem to remember one of these. Oh, no, you get back here. I need you. Where if you held down the jump button, it would automatically bounce you on the tires. I don't know if that was a remake or if that was one of the sequels or what. That, you know, I've never played the advanced version, so possibly that one. <laughs> that would be interesting. I'm not sure. Sh... It takes some getting used to. Yeah. The Game Boy Advance... Some people that probably aren't used to the regular mechanics, but... Yeah. The Game Boy Advance one's remakes were actually pretty good. They added some really nice detail and sounds and stuff. But it seemed they also took away some of the atmosphere of the games. And of course, if you blow them up on a big I think screen, I remember. they look horrible. Yeah, I, I remember. Uh, I think booting it up on my random PSP emulator or something, and uh, I'm thinking, okay, well, no, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just never got around to actually trying it out. So. Okay, now this is a level that I have actually played very little of because. Yeah. I can just. Is this walk. the one you can go to the left and I just can skip it? Just walk to the left here. And you know. 
This is the yeah. end of the level. So... It's a very unique level, though. It is. And one of those mechanics I don't think I've ever seen in a game since. At least not exactly like this. Uh-uh. So yeah, another level done. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy. Mmm, candy. <laughs> Do that every time. <laughs> it's a habit by now. I've been doing that for like 10 years. 12, 15 years. How long is that? This game is old. I'm old. Uh, yeah, I don't know how old this is. <laughs> it was 94. I got the game in 96, 97. I think it was 97, so, yeah. This dude's cool. He is cool. He's a cool dude. He's got a just friggin' surfboard. And he peeks at you behind his sunglasses. And, and the, the his sound, his theme actually has vo vocals in it. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> I don't know how well you can hear it. Yeah, it's just every, every so often you get the high up. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna leave. That's also one of the really cool themes. Millstone Mayhem. Ah, uh, yes. This one's friggin' t tricky stuff here. There's another one where you can bounce off to the left there and do something. Get some nice little bonus. <laughs> Uh, another one of those tiny ah. barrels. <laughs> you know, I could swear in the Game Boy Advance one you could steer yourself while falling. That would be way too easy, but yeah. I'm I'm thinking they. Did you jump down that pit? I don't think so. <laughs> I think so. I'm serious. I really do. No. That's only one life. I don't think there's, there's one of these pits you oh. can jump down. There we go. Oh, okay. that's all. Yeah, that's to get the tire. So, yeah, you're right. I knew there was one of them you could jump down and get the tire, but I, I didn't think it was that one. So now we can. Roll the, <laughs> oh yes, and we roll the tire over here. Oops. Mm -hmm, getting that nice tasty barrel. Oh. Oh well. <laughs> I got in it. Good enough. Oh, yay. I kind of hated those animal tokens. Cause it, yeah. Because you could never keep track of how many you had, and if you got three of them, it would transport you to the bonus level, where granted you could get a bunch of extra lives. Yeah, you just, just but randomly you, get tossed there. And <laughs> but then you got restarted. When you finished it, it would restart you at the checkpoint or at the beginning of the level. So... You made all that progress, and then it just shoots you back to where you started. The only one of those, or two of those, bonus animal levels that I ever liked going to ooh, nice, was the uh, the rhino and the ostrich. Yes, the, the other ones those had the easiest, out. I think, bone had the easiest multiplier rooms to access. What? Yeah, you, you could end up with a whole crap ton of lives out of those. Now, you friggin' jumpy lizard men. No idea what happened there. You were really close to the checkpoint too. That's lame. <laughs> Which one was it that uh, that those guys when Diddy jumped on them, they would laugh? I think the Game Boy Advance one. They changed the laugh to make it sound more menacing. They would or laugh. I'm, I'm feeling very weird about this Game Boy Advance, but now I want to try it. Yeah, it's a, I, <laughs> I've I never actually owned a Game Boy Advance either, so. Oh, I love the Game Boy Advance. Oh no, I have two of them. Great. That was dumb. But yeah, the Game Boy Advance was basically. Yeah, die one more time, and we'll get to go to the fish level. <laughs> The, the Game Boy Advance was the secret resurgence of the 16-bit era. 
so it had a lot of super yeah, that it was remakes. um i've i've man i think we're delaying like crazy here it sounds like i'm interrupting you all the time sorry <laughs> uh, not too bad oh yep he does laugh when he when he jump when diddy jumps on these guys they just sort of oh, go, oh. yeah but in the Game Boy Advance one, they kind of make it sound like an evil, sinister laugh. Yeah, I've emulated the Advance so much. I've played through every single one of the uh, Crash Bandicoot games they had for the Game Boy Advance. Those were awesome. Like, those were really well made. Really? I'm surprised. <laughs> they translated Crash Bandicoot for 2D that well. Oh, and one one thing that was sort of nice about the um, Game Boy Advance Donkey Kong games was the they actually added little cinematics, sort of in-game cinematics with dialogue with text boxes and stuff to actually tell you the story that was included in the manual of the Super Nintendo. So all that um, plot and story text that was in the manual, they actually put in the game. And it's sort of fun, especially oh, on the... That's nice. Nice of them to do that. Yeah. Oh, no, no, get back. Come back. Okay, he's trapped. It's especially nice on the second... Oh, now he's under things, the snake and the rolling guy. <laughs> ah! Um... <laughs> 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 I'm in a catch-22 here. Ha, ah, there. Yeah, that's that's just rock, paper, scissors all over. That's terrible. Okay. He had a roll. Oh. Where'd the guy go? Oh, there he is. Oops. He was out of frame, so it was like he despawned. <laughs> Come on, he just caught the top of my head. What a sad fate. Oh. Yeah, get all your frustrations out. Somebody asking him, how would I react if Shadow Warrior were to be remade? Probably the same way I'd react if any of those build engine games were to be remade. That would be awesome, depending on who was doing it. <laughs> well, they're remaking Shadow Gun. Is that what's on Kickstarter now? Oh. I think it's that sort of... Um, Shadow Run Shadow returns, Run. yeah. That's sort of that card-based style RPG. I don't know what the old um, paper and pencil sort of style that they're going to go for this time. So a little, a little bit more tactical, it sounds like. But yeah, cards are definitely still part of it. Very pen and paper RPG, which is what it was originally. So seems interesting. Which is weird, because I, I have never played any of those kind of games. I haven't really either. I've dabbled in them. <laughs> I, I, I guess that's the right terminology. I've uh, popped them up in DOS box here and there. <laughs> uh. Man, this level is totally not working out, man. Yeah, I know. It's. I, th I think it's the lag. Well, it's... A, there's a couple of really tricky jumps that I've always had trouble with, and then the lag kind of kills it. 
know, whatever the case, the lag is is not a good thing. Uh, that that's for certain. No. Oh, come on, I did. I totally made that jump. Oh man. <laughs> Oh yes, and they're remaking Leisure Suit Larry. That's that's gonna be interesting. That will be interesting. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward one. to it. Although I do kind of wish they were making a whole new game, but you know, this is sort of preliminary, I guess, to judge whether or not that would be worthwhile. <laughs> I mean, the first one's already been remade like three times, so. Well, I, the one reason they said why he's remaking is because they apparently lost all the source code for the original. So there's no way they could really re-release the first one without running it through like a DOS emulator. Yeah, well, I, I probably wouldn't want them to do that either. <laughs> but, you know, they're talking about like reworking some of the humor and you know, sort of modernizing some of that, uh, which... That could be... I guess works. Yeah. Maybe. How low is at least involved? And that's say, saying way much more for those past couple of crap Leisure Suit Larry games that Vivendi put out. So, oh, you know, yeah. if anything, it's a step in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to do a... It'll probably have to be a two-part episode of all the Leisure Suit Larry games to play through all of them. Partly, anyway. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. That that would be interesting. I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out because I have never played a Le Leisure Suit Larry game. It's quite the experience. That's for sure. Yeah. Especially some of the later ones when they start getting much more risque. Yes, number seven. I've I've seen quite a lot of footage of number seven, and that, <laughs> that's something else. Number seven, man. Yeah, that presents. Yes, it does. <sighs> Friggin' bird, throwing its nuts in your face. <laughs> Polite. I think I've been spoiled by the Game Boy Advance one. I think they Maybe made that. So. I think they what made you're it. What describing easier. does sort of sound like there's enough changes. Yeah, and it's about. Having play, been playing this one more now, I think they really altered the Game Boy Advance one quite a lot. More than just the graphics. Oops. Should probably get you. Oh, there's a couple of secrets. I th Is it this one or it might be Forest Frenzy? This is the Volter culture, isn't it? There's one of Yeah, no, there's a couple in here that involve jumping onto, you know, off higher areas and the tires and stuff, but And some of the secret areas are almost impossible to see. And you have to you have to position yourself just right, otherwise you will either die or die. Oh. Oh look. We get to see the ostrich bonus level. Okay. <laughs> Array for ostrich catching little golden ostriches. Let's see if I can still do this one well. lives. Now I can get out of here. See if I can get that 
four, there we go. Four lives. At least I was right at the beginning of the level. So, we won't get kicked back too far. <laughs> or it does just dump me off here. Oh, maybe because I was in a bonus level. I got the three ostriches when I was in a bonus level, so it just dumped me off out of the bonus level. Maybe so. Where if I would have picked it off, picked it out in the middle of the level, then it would have shot me back to the beginning. What? Oh. Going too fast here. One problem when you start getting really good at games, um, yes. a particular game, you Slow start... Slow and steady is the way to win yes. part of Donkey Kong Country. You start to get careless. Oh, that's right, you're not supposed to hold forward in that one. playing here, uh, period. <laughs> so we're not switching or anything. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could. That would be pretty cool, actually. I would agree with that. Some of the, I know, some of the Super Nintendo emulators, what? Some of them allow multiplayer, but over the network, but I'm not sure how well that would work. Uh, yeah, that's always been kind of a weird idea to me. Like, even using things like DOSBox over Hamachi and things like that. It's like, really? You can do that? <laughs> and it works? That's cool. But I had never tried. I tried it with a um, Genesis emulator. Um, doing multiplayer over the internet uh, with Toe Jam and Earl. And... <laughs> That was so out of sync. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was like on my screen, my partner would be drowning in the water, but on his screen, he was just dumb, making his merry way across the level. So it was like we were playing two completely different games. <laughs> Oh, it sounds like playing some of those old IPX connection PC games back in the day. Some of those were just terribly optimized. And it would take like 20 seconds sometimes to catch up at all. Uh, SimCity 2000 Network Edition is one of those. It was like <laughs> <laughs> one second your opponent's city would be there, and the next second it would be rubble because something happened, and it was just. Uh, I remember doing that with. You um, kind of deal with it in a simulation game like that, but something like a platformer, I forget it. Yeah. I remember some of the lag and trying to play Age of Empires 2 over a dial up network. Th things would just oh, wow. sort of randomly pop in and out. And... Yeah. Like, oh, there's, a, there's an army of Huns on the way. Oh, no, no, there's, there's actually not because now it's gone. That would not be cool. Why do I do that? There we go. Nice use of pizzicato in the background of this soundtrack here. I like it. What is pizzicato? Is that a flute? What? That sort of harpy sounding thing in the background. Oh. Uh... Oh, I, I love their animations. <laughs> yeah, eyeballs just come out and stuff. It's all awesome. <laughs> okay, now I grabbed that barrel, threw it at this wall, but then when I turned, the screen refreshed and it's closed now. Uh, that's uh, awesome. 
Screen refresh. Ooh, toward the end of the level. It was always very relieving to see that arrow sign. That, meant, that always meant you were on the home stretch. Unfortunately, the home stretch was sometimes very relative. Yes, relieving, yet also, uh... Yeah, it, it's sort of like a tease at the same time, because you know that home stretch is like... a terrible exercise in timing and stress. And some to some some of the levels, it was like the home stretch. You know, there was there was the arrow sign. They're like, oh, here it is. Here's the exit. And others, it was like, see the arrow sign. Ten minutes later, <laughs> what happened? See, that time I was able to control my fall. That was weird. Yeah, I think you can control it whenever uh, it knows you're going to die. So it just kind of teases you with a sense of control when your fate is inevitable. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't like the barrels that spin like this. Ooh, somebody's talking about After Dark over there in the chat. After Dark. What was After Dark? Yeah, the screensaver, but there was also like a whole set of stuff. So um, different sort of modules and things you could add onto it, you know. There were some games eventually, just all sorts of random flying toasters is what most people know it for. Oh, okay, I used to have that. I, I remember that now. I had the, I got a like, for a dollar at yeah, Target. Yeah, man, flying toasters. Everybody remembers those guys. Yeah, it was a dollar at Target. It was in a cheap cardboard case, and it was After Dark Games. And there was the flying toaster. Um, what else? Oh, that, that's dirty. Both those nuts coming flying at you. I hit the one with the barrel, and the other one hits me in the face. That's dirty death. Yeah, I always liked uh, the bad dog module. Just run around and eat your desktop. Oh, nice. Okay. I even remember one. There was some mod or, or like modified version somebody put on AOL back in the day. The dog would like take a dump on your uh, files and stuff. And pee all over your icons. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> My parents made me get rid of it. Uh, yes. Okay, let's see if I can actually go into this secret area now. Hopefully it won't despawn. Yeah, there we phantom go. walls, please don't do it again. I want to go back and play the oh. Game Boy Advance one and see what if the <clears throat> physics and controls are really that different. I wouldn't doubt they were. Uh, somebody was mentioning over there in the chat earlier or something about like maybe they had to make some concessions for the lack of as many buttons and smaller screen real estate. Um, from what I remember, it was a little more zoomed in. So. Yeah, and they made the one of the shoulder buttons a run button, I remember. Oh, yes. Lead the beaver over here. Oh, no, it wasn't the beaver. It was the vulture. That's what we had to do. Kill the beaver. Bring the vulture. Yes. There we go. Oh, that 
Those, those are not good games when you have uh, well. capture <laughs> lag. <laughs> no, not at all. In fact, this entire level is going to be very interesting. This whole game has been very interesting with the capture lag. I'm not <laughs> doubting that at all. I think I may want to... You'd be playing like a strategy game or something. That's, that's kind of... Yeah. Well, you know, however many milliseconds of lag. I'm going to cheat and use a save state here. I forgot we were in an emulator entirely, so... Yes. That's S. What's up? So, save successful. Thank you. Oh, it apparently auto saves. Nice. Okay, so I've got a random question for you. What is your uh, your take on the Wii U supposedly coming out this Christmas? I think it looks dumb. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not alone then. <laughs> uh, yes. I totally overshot that. I still have no idea how they're going to manage to make that controller tablet monster feasible for normal gameplay. No, it makes no sense. It's like literally holding up a baking pan. It just doesn't work in my eyes. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to try it out and see for myself. I mean, I will. I'll reserve final judgment for then, but I just don't. And that and having the whole screen on there, too, it just seems like it's it's screaming for more gimmicks. And, you know, ah. Well, and a lot of the third-party developers, it sounds like they're saying that, you know, for cross-platform games, they're just going to use that as, like, an inventory pause menu kind of thing. So obviously it's going to be... I, yeah. Nintendo is the only one that's going to be use, make any creative use out of it again, so... Yeah, once again, it sounds like a repeat of what's going on or what happened with the Wii and everything. Nintendo, they put out the use for it because they built their things completely around it because it's only on that system. It makes sense. But third party, it's like, okay, you're going to get a few people randomly doing something with it. But otherwise, yeah, I, I don't know, man. And I saw something the other day about the price. They're expecting 350 ish dollars for the price range. Yeah, and the so. components are supposed to be around uh, 180. Yeah, 180 for components, and then mark up for everything else. Mm. That seems a bit steep, at least for the typical Wii ownership population right now. So. Uh huh. And it's not going to play. GameCube games, because they already took that out of the Wii. That's right, they did. That sucks. I know. <laughs> oh, I thought there was another barrel to catch me down there. Oh, holy crap. I hate those freaking barrels right there. Those barrels. I know. Especially the ones that you have to time you a just, couple you different... You have to jump into them as... Yeah, yeah, if you jump into them as soon as you just run towards them, don't even think about timing. Just run towards them and jump as soon as possible. It's the only way I could ever get it to work. I just have uh, to sit there and about the stare and stare at it and until my eyes glazed over yeah. and I was like, okay, now let's go. And half the time it would work. Okay, well, we're almost running an hour, so with credits and intro and whatever that would probably come out to right around the size I need for the podcast so this will be episode one of well, hopefully <laughs> hopefully hopefully our long play of Donkey Kong Country provided we don't get killed by capture lag so yeah, if we could figure out some sort of solution for that, that would be awesome. I'm sure this would be a lot less, <laughs> a lot yeah. less painful. I'm, I'm cringing for you here, man. I really am. I'm curious. I'm wondering if it's the live streaming or if it's just the capture card. Because I have had trouble in the past yeah. when I live stream something, the lag seems to always go up. So I'm... 
I may have to try this out without the live streaming and see if I still get the lag. Yeah, experimentation is uh, definitely sounding like a good idea. Yes, yeah, so until then, we will probably see you next week uh, for the long play anyways. Otherwise, stay tuned because sometime this week I am going to be recording the 42nd episode of the regular In Retrospection in which we will be playing Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So Ooh, that, that sounds sweet. Yes, because it's the 42nd episode, so obviously we have to play Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Of course, yes. That's no other possible time. <laughs> So thanks everyone for watching and we will see you next time in the past.